Hi, in this video we're going to talk about polymorphism. So let's revisit our shapes hierarchy from earlier. Here you can see we have the shape, class up at the top, and then rectangle and ellipse, those were subclasses, and square and circle, those were also subclasses. So this was our shape class hierarchy. And let's talk a little bit more about that get area method. So each shape subclass has its own get area method with a different implementation. But how do we know which method to call? And if you look in this example code below, we say shape S equals new rectangle, shape C equals new circle, you can see the type of those variables over on the left is shape. So shape, you know, shape has a get area method, but it's abstract. How do we know which implementation to call? So introducing polymorphism, and polymorphism is the capability of a method to do different things depending on the object it is acting upon. So let's dive a little bit more into that definition. So first, polymorphism is a word from biology where an organism can have different forms or different stages. And in Java, and it means subclasses can have their own behavior and also share behavior of the parent class. So if we go look back at that code with a small snippet of our shape hierarchy, we can see shape R equals new rectangle, shape C equals new circle, and then you see we call system.printline to r.getArea and c.getArea. And so this version of polymorphism is happening with method overriding. And so polymorphism here means that the correct implementation of getArea will be called even though both objects are of type shape. And that's because we're gonna call the specific implementation of getArea on the correct object. And the way that this is actually working is with something called dynamic binding or late binding. And so the proper method to be called is chosen at runtime, not compile time. And making a runtime decision about which method to call here is called dynamic binding or late binding. And this is in contrast to making this decision at compile time, which is called static binding or early binding. And so remember, runtime, that's actually what the time when the program's actually running. Compile time is when we're checking, okay, does your program all work? And what this means is that when it's running, when this program's running, we're making a sort of game time decision about what the proper get area method to call is. And so you can see that the actual object is a rectangle, so we go and call the proper rectangle one, or the proper circle get area. Now let's look at uh, animal hierarchy. You can see we have an animal class up at the top, and then dog, cow, and pig extend from animal. And here's a little snippet of our animal class. It's an abstract class, and it has an abstract method, public abstract void, talk. And talk will make the sound that the animal makes. So here's a dog subclass, and when a dog talks, it prints out bark. And here's a cow subclass. When a cow talks, it prints out moo. And here's a tester. You can see in our run method, we make a new dog, cow, and pig, and then we call talk on each of those objects. And so here in the blue, this is the question, this is the area where we're really diving into polymorphism. How do we know which talk method to call? This is using polymorphism, method overriding, and dynamic binding. It means that, poly, with polymorphism, it means that actually the right method is going to be called because these subclasses can act a little bit differently with their own talk method. And specifically, it's because the talk method is being overridden. It's being overridden. So why would we do this? The short answer is to facilitate polymorphism. We can take advantage of that in several ways. The first is related to formal parameters in a method. By using a superclass parameter, denoted as type T, we can pass the method any object of the superclass or subclass, denoted as type S. Another common use is creating arrays and ArrayList. Recall that arrays and ArrayList have to have the same object type. However, if that object type is a T object, then the array or ArrayList can store either a T or an S. In this example, we're going to look at how we can use the superclass, or type T, as a formal parameter. We start by creating two objects. Notice that both our objects use the reference type of a person, but one object is created as a person and the other as a student. 
We then use a static method that takes a person as an input and we can call a method from the person class to print out both the jobs person object and the Lovelace student object. In a similar example, we once again create a person and student object. This time we are going to place them in an array of type person. Even though the Lovelace variable is a student, we are able to combine it in the same person array with the jobs variable. We can then use an enhanced for loop to print out the objects. Notice that the enhanced for loop assigns both the jobs and Lovelace variables to the person enhanced loop variable and then prints them out. So let's explore these classes in our editor. So first I want to go back to the shapes example from earlier, uh, but talk about it now a little bit more in the context of polymorphism. So you can see here that we're making a new rectangle, making a new circle, making a new ellipse, making a new square, but that the type on the left is actually the more generic type. It's the parent class called shape. So these are all shapes. These are all shapes. And when we call get area, right, we're actually choosing then at runtime which get area method to call. So if we run this code, you'll see, right, it prints out the proper area formula by calling the proper implementation. Now let's look at the animal class. So you can see we have um, a really simple uh, abstract class for animal, which just has one talk method. And then uh, in the dog, you can see that the dog, one we call talk, when it overrides the talk method, it prints out bark. The cow prints out moo. And the pig prints out oink. And then we go in our tester. When we go in our tester, you can see that we're making uh, a few objects. The left type here is animal um, and then the more specific type when we instantiate it is the specific animal and so and so when we call this method the proper implementation gets called so we run the code and you can see it prints out bark moo and oink so this is an example of polymorphism and you get to play with it a little bit more